The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faith, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Hi guys. I want to start this week with um, telling you a little bit of my own story. I've been a believer in Jesus for, for a long time now. And where that really seriously began for me was when I was 14 years old. Uh, I had grown up in the church and, you know, you know, Sunday school youth group, Sunday morning services, Sunday evening services. Wow, how old am I? And my youth group used to uh, go to occasional regional gatherings where lots of different youth groups would come together and they'd have a special speaker, usually someone who had something to say to youth, teenagers in particular. And this one event, when I was 14, the speaker had decided to focus on the book of Revelation. And in particular, the really scary parts of the book of Revelation. Now, most of that book is uh, difficult to understand. It can be confusing, um, and depending on how you interpret it, it can be quite terrifying. And that night, the speaker had decided to focus on the really scary parts of the book of Revelation, uh, in particular on um, God's anger and judgment and what would happen to us if Jesus were to come back and find us not in, in a spiritually submitted uh, frame of mind that we hadn't surrendered our lives to him, that we hadn't given him the lordship that he demands in our lives, that we had not asked him to be our, uh, our savior. That we, by doing that, by being in that position when Jesus comes back, and we don't know when that's going to happen, it could happen any second now, um, we would be bringing on ourselves, with no one else to blame, all of his anger, all of his wrath, all of his judgment and punishment. That one day we would stand in front of his throne and he would look at us and uh, he, he would just kind of go, doink, off you go, into an eternity without any uh, of pain and loneliness and regret and more pain and I had heard all of that before. I had grown up hearing teaching about this um, the, this doctrine, and for some reason that night it it got to me. It really, really got to me, and <clears throat> I was I was terrified. I was absolutely just terrified. And I can remember that I was physically shaking and sobbing as I walked down the aisle to the front of the church, along with other people who were probably thinking the same thing that I was thinking, something along the lines of, well, God, I don't know if I like you very much. I don't know if I trust you, but anything has got to be better than that. So here I am. Do with me what you will. And, I mean, I can smile at it now. It's almost funny. Um, it's been just over 40 years, and I'm still here, which kind of amazes me. Because the reason why I'm still here is not that I'm still afraid, because I'm not. God has very, very patiently walked with me away from that fear and towards an understanding of, of who he really is. It's taken a lot of reading and a lot of thinking and a lot of praying and it's all a bit Wizard of Oz. It's a bit, um, you know, there's the big scary face, but then when you draw back the curtain and you see who's really there, it's a completely different person than what you thought it was in the first place. And uh, in the words of Adrian Plass, one of my absolute favorite authors, God is nice and he likes you. Got to get that on a t-shirt. 
And better than that, unlike the great and powerful Oz, God actually has the power to bring you home. So this is what God's been teaching me over the last 40 years. He's been helping me to understand that what that preacher did that evening was take a big picture of God and zoom in 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 on one tiny part of it until it's so pixelated that it no longer is recognizable. The information is true, but it's completely out of perspective. God is not mad at everybody all the time. He's not just looking for an excuse to send us away so that he doesn't have to look at us anymore. Yes, God does express anger. Absolutely. Specifically at hypocrites and power brokers, at those who victimize the vulnerable, at lying and the breaking of promises, at empty religiosity and self-righteousness, at the powers in the world whose goal it is to tear us apart, to tear the world apart, and to come between us and God. Famous dead guy, Apostle Paul, wrote this. Therefore, any one of you who judges each other, judging, condemning each other for, for things that we've done wrong, any one of you who judges is without excuse. When you judge one another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, are guilty of the same things. We know that God's judgment on those who do such things is based on truth. I mean, do you really think that anyone is going to escape God's judgment? Or do you despise the riches of his kindness, his restraint, and his patience? Do you refuse to recognize that God's kindness is intended to lead you to a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of behavior? God's kindness leads us to change. Not his anger, his kindness. So what does that mean? Another thing I've learned is that um, in order to understand God, we look at Jesus because Jesus is God's most accessible self-portrait. Jesus is God. So what is true of him is true of God. So we look at, at the life of Jesus and the example that he, he sets for us in modeling this kindness that the Spirit promises to grow within us. And Jesus had, I mean, Jesus had more power in, in the cuff of his trouser leg than anybody has ever had, ever and ever will. Jesus was God, but he, he had empathy for enemies and for invaders. He welcomed strangers and rejects. He lifted up to equal value women and children. He challenged the power brokers and the hypocrites. And after his resurrection, the first thing he did was reconnect with the friends who had abandoned him. So what does Jesus' kindness model for us? What did he do with his kindness. He used it to draw people towards himself. He used it to draw people towards wanting to change so that they would be more like him. Kindness, like the rest of the fruit of the Spirit, is for sharing. It's for us to use in our relationship with each other. It is not something for filling your pockets and for feeling better about yourself. We do not live in a kind world. I mean, on our YouTube channel, we have 
comments set to be moderated before they appear publicly because if you've spent any amount of time on YouTube, you know that comments on YouTube videos can be intensely personal and nasty because if we think that it's somehow anonymous, we can say anything we want and that's what comes out. That's what comes out of the human heart when we think we can get away with it. We like to put people up on pedestals and tell them how wonderful they are so that we can knock them over. We like to demand our rights. My rights are more important than everybody else's rights. And it is more important that I be listened to than that anybody else be listened to. We are not kind people. So why is it that God wants us to be kind? Well, why is God kind? He's kind because it draws people to repentance. It gives us a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance. It, when, we, when we've you know, taken our bow and arrow and we've shot and we've missed the target, he will gently take the, the bow from our hands and walk us back to where we need to be and say, okay, try again. And through his writing, through creation, through, through the writings that, that we see in scripture, through um, creation that he has his created for us, through, um, through our interactions and conversations with each other, he uses kindness, his kindness to bring us back to himself. So why, what is the role of kindness in our lives, in our interpersonal relationships? What is it that God wants us to demonstrate and to use it for? If it is so counterintuitive for us to be kind to each other, why should we pursue it? Well, because we're following Jesus' example because we are empathizing the way he has empathized with us. We are welcoming others the way he welcomed us. We are challenging each other in the way that he challenges us. We lift each other up the way that he has lifted us up so that his kindness can draw people to him. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in sin. We are saved by grace. Together with Christ Jesus, he has also raised us up and seated us in the heavens, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. I'm going to go sing a song. I hope that you will click on the link that will be here and sing along with me. This is a song, um, the lyrics will be familiar to many of you with a slightly different tune. It reminds us of God's kindness in calling us to himself and leading us.